Okay, I take negative x and I plug it in for x. And when you take negative x and you plug it in for x, what is negative x cubed? Is that going to be positive or negative? Negative times 3 will be a negative 3x cubed. When I plug in negative x here and I square it, what do I get? Positive x squared, and then you have the minus 4, so it will be a minus 4x squared. I take the negative x and plug it in here. It will be 5 times negative x is negative 5x, and then minus 2. That's p of negative x. How many sign changes are there now? None. That means it does not cross the x-axis on the left side at all. We know that. It would be silly of us to guess any negative numbers. What are the total real solutions? Well, we either have 3 and 0, which would make 3, or we have 1 and 0, which would make 1. So the total number of real solutions is 3 or 1. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to list this part. That's what happened when I picked up the microphone. We'll get back to it. Let's look at a second example. P of x. I look at the number of sign changes for the positive real. How many sign changes are there? None. It is not going to cross the x-axis on the right-hand side at all. The number of negative real roots or solutions is equal to the number, sorry, I forgot to write that down for the last one, the number of sign changes and not P of X, but P of negative X or less by a factor of 2. I'm going to produce P of negative X. If I take X to the fourth and plug in negative X, negative X to the fourth, will that be positive or negative? Positive. Then you multiply it by a negative, you get negative X to the fourth. Negative X squared, that'll be positive as well, won't it? And then you have a minus, be a minus X squared. And then you have a minus 1. It's the same thing as what we started with, isn't it? So how many sign changes are there? There are none. So if there are no positive real, and there are no negative real, how many total real solutions are there? There's none. This polynomial doesn't cross the x-axis. Is it possible to draw a fourth degree polynomial and not cross the x-axis? Well, sure. Here's an example. It must look something like that. No solutions does not cross the x-axis. If you got one that ends in 48, you got to list out a lot of numbers, like 48, 24, 16, 8, da 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 And you got all the negative ones as well, don't you? Wouldn't it be really nice if you had something that told you, well, hey, let's not guess any of the ones up there, and let's not guess any of the ones down there. Let's only focus on this small little grouping. Wouldn't that be really nice? Well, I'm going to show you right now how to do that, okay? It's called the upper and lower bound theorem. Want some help, kiddo? You got them? There you go. Upper lower bound theorem says this. Suppose B is positive, and B is one of the numbers that you're choosing from, okay? If you plug it in to the synthetic division, and it produces these results, suppose it produces 1, 5, 3, 0, 2. If it produces results that are all non-negative, The word non-negative means positive and zero, okay? So if it produces all results that are non-negative, 
then we know that B is an upper bound. B is an upper bound. And what that means is there's no solutions that will work that are bigger than B. It helps you rule out some of the choices that might not work. So we'll show you the example. It says, show that the polynomial right here has zeros that lie between negative 3 and positive 2. So I'm going to show 2 is an upper bound. And it's super simple. In order to show that 2 is an upper bound, I'm going to take 2. I'm going to divide it into 1, 0, negative 3, 2, and negative 5. Watch what happens when I divide 2 in. I drop the 1 and I multiply. Add. Multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add. What do you notice about the result? They're all not negative, right? Therefore, we shouldn't guess any values bigger than 2. No values bigger than 2 would work. Guaranteed. It tells us that 2 is the biggest solution that could work. Now, is 2 a solution? No. Got a remainder. But we shouldn't guess 3, 4, 5, or 6. None of them would work. If you want to show that negative 3 is a lower bound, if A is negative and you plug it in here, and you get this as a result, 3, negative 6, 4, negative 2, 9, what do you notice about those? They alternate, don't they? If it alternates all the way through, then you know it's a lower bound. So we are going to show negative 3 is a lower bound. I'm going to take negative 3. I'm going to drop it right through to 1, 0, negative 3, 2, negative 5. Drop the 1. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. And add. Whoop, positive 4, 2. What do you notice about the result? Alternating. So therefore, because you have alternating signs, you know that negative 3 is a lower bound. Because they are all non negative, you know that 2 is an upper bound. You guys, I don't use that very often. It's a very small piece. I'm going to show you right now in class. You're going to spend two minutes on it, and then really, we're not going to look at it too much again. Okay? Spend two minutes, and then we're going to get to what's really important for today. Go. Okay, we're going to put the uh, couple things uh, that we learned together today into action, along with the stuff that we learned the past couple days. And that's what makes this unit so great, is that if you could do one problem, this one problem really tells you how you're going to do on the test. So these two problems that we're going to do at the end of our lesson, if you can do these two, you are set to get an A on the next test. I'm not, not joking. This is, a, this is a definitely a test where my personal goal is that the lowest score in the class is an 85%. That's my personal goal. I think that's a lofty goal, don't you guys? Like lowest score, 85%. That's my goal. Would you rather have a goal of 75% or a goal of 55%? I told you about uh, the graduate who told us that uh, teacher, college professor walked in class and said, I'm tired of you guys getting such good grades. I make sure the next test you guys are getting 60s and 70s.
the student who graduated last year shared that with us. She drove up to her next test. Guess what she got? 1096. So thank you, Mr. Gans, for preparing me so well. You don't believe me. That's all right. Okay. You guys are a lively crowd today. I can tell. You got a lot of sleep last night. Here we go. Um, so find all rational zeros of the polynomial, then find the irrational zeros if there are any when appropriate. Use the rational roots theorem, the upper and lower bounds theorem, Descartes' rule of signs, the quadratic formula, other factoring techniques, sketch a graph, whole piece. We're taking a single problem, and we're going to break it down and diagnose it inside and out, left, right, upside and down. And we start with this. I'm going to look at the number of positive real solutions of this polynomial. Somebody tell me how many possible positive real solutions do I have? Two. Or, because you looked at the sign changes. That wasn't too tough, was it? Now let's determine P of negative X. Will the sign change? Instead of X to the third, I have negative x to the third. Notice how if it's even, it stays the same. So minus 3x squared, the negative 13x will switch to a positive 13x, and the positive 15 stays the same. So if you didn't figure that out yet, all the odd degrees will switch with the negative, and the positives will stay the same. Look at the new polynomial. How many sign changes are there? So therefore, the number of negative real solutions is 1. I don't subtract 2 to go down to negative. You can't have negative solutions. So, total real. Well, let's consider the possibilities. I could have two positive real and one negative real. That would make how many? Three. Or it's possible I could have zero positive real and one negative real. And that would make one. Those are my total possibilities I could come up with. And if you think of graphing a cubic, that makes sense. You could either cross three times or you could cross one time. Does that make sense to you as you're graphing it? Yeah, see how the picture comes together? It's one of the great things about mathematics is when you can picture it and see what's going on. Okay, all right, great. Well, let's factor this guy. Do you know what factors? Me neither. Got no idea. Better go to the rational roots theorem. Thank goodness we have that. Think of what we would do if we didn't have the rational roots here. We'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do the problem. But we have it. We know how to do it. Choices. One. I like it. Three. Five. Fifteen. What would you like to try? Okay, let's try one. One minus three. Minus thirteen. Plus 15, I get 0. 1 worked. Way to go. That means x minus 1 is a factor. Let's divide it in. Drop the 1. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. I come up with x squared minus 2x minus 15. Does that factor? It does. To what? Hey, I know my solutions. Get negative 3, positive 1, positive 5. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I say at the very beginning that there would be how many negative real solutions? And how many do we have? How many positive real solutions were we going to have? And how many do we have? How many total solutions do we have? See, we were able to diagnose ahead of time exactly what we were able to get. Do you know what this graph looks like? Goes through 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Goes through negative 3, positive 1, positive 5. 
to cubic. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, if I asked you to come up with that graph, you know, I mean, you, you would have you've been ty typing in X and Y values and try to compute some different points and see what you get. We're able to come up with a complete graph exactly across the X axis and everything in a matter of just a couple minutes. Flip it over. Last problem. Oh, no. Mr. Gens gave us a fifth degree polynomial. Oh, my gosh. I must be a jerk. He must have had a bad night's sleep last night. He's trying to punish us. I consider a number of positive real solutions. How many sign changes do you see? I got one there. Got one there. One there. I got four. Four, two, or zero. How about the number negative real? Well, I got to do P of negative X then, don't I? That's complicated. Let's see. It's going to be a negative X of fifth. It's going to be minus 3X of fourth. It's going to be plus an X cubed. Plus 11X squared. Plus 12X. Plus 4. All right, how many sign changes do you have there? One. So how many total real are you going to have? Very good. You guys are smart. Five or three or one. Do you know how to factor that? I have no idea either. Good thing for the rational roots theorem. What are our choices? Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus. Oh, Mr. Gens, he's such a nice guy. Even though he gives us a fifth degree polynomial, he only gives us six choices. Like, that's a pretty good deal. Like, we'll take the trade off, right? Like, we'd much rather be that than this be three and this be 512. Like, that would make us very sad, right? Yeah, so maybe Mr. Gens did get a good night's sleep last night. Maybe he is a nice guy. Who knows? Jury's still out. What do you want to try? All right. I like the way you think, Willie. Try is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Minus 1 is negative 3. Plus 11 is 8. Minus 12 is negative 4. Plus 4 is 0. Yes, 1 works. It's almost as though the teacher that wrote these problems tried to make it so that 1 would work a lot of the times. I hope that teacher writes our test. Sounds like a nice, caring individual. Somebody who deserves a Christmas bonus. I tried negative one. I got a four at the end. So it looks like all the numbers are still in play. Sometimes I just like to try the same number over and over again. Can we try one again? And instead of like writing out the polynomial, I just try dividing into it. And if the remainder comes out to be zero, then it works. Let's try it again. One, one, negative one, negative one, negative four, negative four, 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 zero. Did it work? All right. Should we try it again? Or maybe we should be smarter than the problem and decide that at this point, instead of doing the rational roots theorem, what can we do? We just factor it. What, what factoring method would you use? Grouping. Looks like Kaylee went to the restroom. Look at that. Now all of YouTube knows. That's amazing. Okay, take out the x squared. x minus 1, take what out now? Negative 4, I get an x minus 1. Take the x minus 1 out, you're left with 
x squared minus 4. So you got the x minus 1, there's an x plus 2, x minus 2. And it, didn't we have two 1s before that? So, which would be like an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. So, my x solutions are 1, 1, 1, 2, and negative 2. Cool. Does that fit with my diagnosis? How many negative solutions do I have? I got one. How many positive? Four for a total of five. Sweet. Can I graph it? Yeah. I can. Doyle can. Logan can. Dane can't. He's asleep. He's like, like, dude, I'm so tired. Like, I was up this morning doing basketball practice. Wait a minute. No, that was Doyle and Logan. They should be the tired ones. I went to bed early last night. Mr. Ginsk is a jerk. There you go. His cake upside down. If you do a problem like that, you can get an A on this next test. Those are like the last two problems on your assignment. You guys are set to go. Okay. Tomorrow, we investigate complex numbers. Stay on top of your homework and it's not going to be so difficult over break. Rumor has you guys got some homework over break. Is that true?